Saturday of Gen Con. I already cried about it. It's great. Um, and I'm feeling, uh, I don't know, I'm feeling weird, though I did choose to sleep in today. Yesterday I got really kind of a little grumpy and a little frustrated and it was absolutely due to lack of sleep. So I decided to sleep in this morning. Um, I'll edit yesterday's video whenever I get a chance. And yeah, it's Saturday. It's already 10, I think. So I'm gonna head down to the convention center. Um, I haven't heard from any of my friends yet. So I don't know what they're up to. Um, but I figured I'd just walk the halls for a little bit and see like the vendor hall and see if I see anything shiny that I want to get. <laughs> There's a long like post that has a list of all of the different board games coming out this year and you can filter that list or like that are like debut at Gen Con. Sometimes they've got games from the previous year on there but for the most part they're all new and um, you can filter that list by like mechanic or age or whatever you want language. Uh, so I go on that list and I filter by cooperative because that's like the games that I'm looking for and I just did that. I found like 10-15 games that sound interesting to me. So now I'm just going to wander through the hall and try to find some of those games and check them out and see if I might want to pick them up. So you guys can come with me. Right now I am in row 3000 looking for Born Envy games and they have a small game called Defrag. And the thing I'm always on the hunt for ideally are smaller box games because I have to travel with them out of Gen Con that are cooperative and smart and clever, something a little different from what I already have. Um, so Defrag is a small game and we're gonna go check it out. Uh, I also will get the bigger games sometimes, I love them, but again, they're harder to travel with, so it has to be a really good sell to, for me to pick that one up. And yeah, we're just gonna try to find 30, what a number, 3052 I think is the booth number. I then get to do the arrow ability on that. Okay. So this is telling me I can move one card in this column down one position. It can never be the card itself, but maybe I want to move this down to here because since these match, it's going to stack and I'm starting to consolidate my Okay. Feet because at one, one point I will score this pile by counting how many icons are in it. So after you play a card, you always get a card and then you can play another card. Something you can do is recycle a card. Instead of playing it for the arrow, you could recycle it from the game, which allows you to rotate a card, or a siren, to lure sailors to our side of the cove. So I'm going to sing a song and so are you, and I want mine to be more alluring. So through two rounds of card drafting, we're gonna construct a song like this, and then we're gonna score them. There's four different things on cards that score, which I can get into detail if you'd like. We're now heading over to the Cosmos booth at the end of, well, at the start of 2600. They have a game called The Gang or Gang that I wanna check out. I've had enormous results with Cosmos games in the past, and uh, we actually played Masters of Crime Vendetta, a demo here a few days ago. What was it, Thursday? And that went poorly, <laughs> so we'll see. Um, I don't know if I talked much about uh, the demo that we did actually, and the game could be really fun. It is like one of those, you can only play it once, solve a mystery or a crime type games. And the interesting thing is that it actually interacts with um, the real world in some ways. So you actually use Google Maps, you can call certain phone numbers or access certain websites that are just designed for the game itself. So that's really cool. But I didn't know some of that when we first went in. So demoing a game that can only be played once was not like the best move. And they only let us play like, like a few minutes of the actual game because they didn't want to spoil it for us. So like we didn't actually get to play it properly. Then the demo, it was pretty short. We only got through like maybe a little part of the game and some of the real world interactions, even the person running the demo wasn't quite sure if we were like getting the clue or what the answers were. So it just felt very confusing between like what's a real business and what's a business for the game, like on Google Maps. And 
that was just a little bit frustrating. I don't know if I would pick that one up. And it's kind of, you know, if you really like those kinds of games, I think it could be fun. But if you're on the fence about those kind of games, I don't think this is the slam dunk. You guys play Texas Hold'em? Yes. So it's three to six players? Three to six players. We got four here. Um, how I like to word it is when you look at your pocket cards here, if you would fold, bid one. If you would raise, bid the four. If you would check to see what other people are doing, you think you have like a middle hand, so you'll take one in the middle. I'm going to start to the left of the dealer. The player who was at a one. One, two, three. Your point scanner says before we reveal the highest valued hand, we as a team need to determine what the relative strength was. Was he at high card? Was he at a pair? Was he at two pair? What do you think? I'm actually cleaning up. <laughs> and I'm about to start if you want to join. Everybody else, if you're playing a collaborative mode, knock it down, you lose. You are trying to get all of this and all the cats onto this island. I'm going to go so if I wanted to do something like this, that's totally valid, okay? So now I have to hang a cat on this wire. If there were more than just that one wire, this one pink wire, I could choose to hang this on any, hang that cat on any of the pink wires that I wanted to. However, in this case, we just have the one, so we have to hang one. If I had kept out that second black cube, you'll know it would be like, okay, well, I don't have enough wires to hang this cat. We can only have one cat on each one. You will hold on to that cube until your next turn comes around. And then you roll the dice, take your feet, and whatever color you pull out at that point, that's going to be what you're going to be more common. Okay? So I placed my poles here, now I have to hang the cap. Now some of these are varying levels of difficulty. This little chunky boy here, he hangs by his paw, which is really slippery. So if you bump him, he's going to fall off. Say, for example, that I had multiple caps on you're hanging on this board right now. If I was to knock this over while well, I was trying to either place my pole, I knock the cat off the wire and place him on his pole, or trying to place my cat here, I have to pick this cat up and hang it back up there. We can place the cat anywhere onto this pole that we want, on this string that we want to. However, if you place it over here and it's touching this pole, that's an invalid move. We also don't want the cat to touch the ground, and we don't want the cat to touch other wires. So if there was another wire under here, you hang this cat on this wire and it touches, it's completely invalid. You're going to have to move it. So I'm going to attempt to hang this on here. What? Sorry. <laughs> Give me a freaking heart attack. I got to see the kitty cat game. That game is uh, with the Hachette people, and it's cute. Um, I'm like on the fence about cooperative dexterity games sometimes. That one seems super cute. I'd love to actually try a demo of it before picking it up. Um, but yeah, that, that's it's a super cute theme. That's the cards here. Um, and, and reveal more cards and try to get all the way through this stack. Okay. So there's a bunch of ways to match. We can match by color, by number. We can add numbers together, subtract numbers, and we can even mix colors. So like I could mix three and one the, I mean the red and the yellow to make orange and get this five. Okay, and then do I would, would I take it or no? It just gets discarded. Okay, and then we'd re, we'd have another reveal, right? Interesting. Okay. And so the the a couple of twists is your starting hand. You don't get any more cards guaranteed to you okay. unless you ultimate. Oh. So ultimate is putting two cards together and matching both color and number. Okay. So I can have the same color and add and subtract the numbers, or I can mix colors. So like okay. this three and this one, that'll mix together to do this orange four. Okay. Now ultimatches, I get to draw two cards. So we're working together to try to get as many ultimatches, get more cards, give us more choices as we're doing this. Right. We can also, there's a trading a aspect to it too. But if I trade you a card, I can't tell you what it is. Okay. You just, it's blind and you have to hope that I gave you something yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of a, a twist in there. How many it's, cards do you have usually? It, it depends on the number of players. Okay. So like in solo mode, you have 13, but if there's five players, you only have four. Less, okay. Right, so I just picked up Ultimatch from Fireside Games. I think that's going to be a really fun, puzzly game. So we are checking out Ziggurat by Mindware. And this one we're excited about because I think... Some of my favorite game designers, Matt Leacock, oh no, um, Rob Davio is the designer on this one. Those are just decorations. Oh, okay. And then, the new yellow here. Right, so there's one. Ziggurat definitely looks cute, um, but it's in a bigger box, so I'm not going to be picking it up here. I have an awesome LGS at home, where I'll probably get that one. Um, 
and it looks a little more evolved than like a quick little co-op for my backpack but it could be it could be really good I'm um, I wonder if it is interesting and clever it definitely has I don't know I don't know I can't think of any of the games where you kind of have a character with abilities and you move around the map and some of those can feel a little samey so I'm really curious to see how this one actually ends up feeling when I get to play it. something just so funny when folks are cosplaying as like let's say a Nazgul and you're like oh my god dude can I get a quick photo of you and they're like sure or they like, nod or something so you get the photo and you're like you cosplay so good I love it and then they respond with like oh thanks so much <laughs> it's just not something that I would expect a Nazgul or like the most evilest of creatures or villains to say and I just love it <laughs> the contradiction between like a super awesome evil bloody cosplay and like the most the most happy cheerful person <laughs> it just gets me every time because you got it north south east and west you get direction and you want to use your 10 card deck that i gave you to describe each of those so if you go from this this uh circle you go straight to this star from this star you could go down to this circle that's four points up there if they guess right so you are going to uh give them direction and clues as descriptive as you can and the person beside you, or if there's multiple people that are to work together to guess your clues, mm -hmm. which they are playing, they're about to uh, get done get with their, started. They're okay. about to start their second round. Perfect, thank you. First round you have three, uh, you'll use three of your arrows. Second round you will use all five. It's only a two round game. Oh, how long does it take to play? It depends on how many people there is. Yeah. It could be... Uh, this is a cooperative game mm -hmm. and in this game we are ancestors humans all right and uh, in this game um, in, uh, we have several rounds in this game and this is a demo game so we have two rounds and each of the rounds one player becomes a mentor 
and the mentor drew a card from here. We're asking you to sniff their dice. Wait, whoa, is that a thing? That is a thing. Okay, no thank you. I don't remember what booth it was. Pizza? Okay, I do want to sniff the pizza dice, actually. It's an Italian restaurant. What did you think of the demo of, uh, well, can you say it? Gibberers. Wow, you did so good. What do you think? Uh, it was a very interesting game. I want it. I think it would be really good if you're trying to create a language for uh, like a, a, a book or like a game. a sci-fi game or an RPG or something. Or, or even that something way in the past. I want to sniff it. A couple of RPGs. I bought Butter Princess and some of the other ones from the the other booth I showed you. And I don't know. Right now we are waiting for Kenda to show up, but I can't see her. And then it'll be 2:30 right now. So it'll, it's 2:30 now. We're gonna go walk mm, Stuart over to where they muster for the cosplay costume contest uh, parade. And I'll get a lot of pictures of cosplay out there. And then I've got an event at three that I have to go to. And um, that'll be really fun. So I'll take you guys with me. I think ever that I'm not watching the costume parade because I've got an event and I forgot how busy and bottlenecked all of the paths get when everybody starts just sitting down in the hallways so if you got an event at 3 p.m. on Saturday especially an event that crosses through the event hall or any of the connecting areas just plan ahead you're gonna need more time to get there My very favorite things to do at the show is to not only just like see all the different cosplays but actually like just <laughs> just tell them how much you love it and they are so genuinely excited about the thing that they're cosplaying and you can see how much work and passion they put into it and when you tell somebody you love their costume they know that you know what their cosplay is and they've made a fellow kind of connection with somebody and i think both ends of that interaction are always just so excited so if you love a cosplay tell that person tell them that you like their outfit tell them you like their hair whatever it is don't hold back and i don't know you're gonna probably make their day when people say hi to me in the hallways for my youtube video i don't know if you guys know but that like it fills my heart so, and I've noticed the same similar vibe from 
when I tell cosplayers I love what they're doing so highly recommend it's so good so I swear I never end up at the JW and this is I feel like only my second ever time maybe third ever time here so I don't really know where I'm going and my event starts exactly right now we're going to see a chill touch improv RPG thing it's only one hour it has some of the guys from glass cannon and drop out on it <laughs> Zone, like a Starbucks or a bathroom. What was that back there? Waffle House! Waffle House. Hang out. <laughs> I am sorry, I am late, Myrna. I am in the weeds. <laughs> Delilah, you're my you're my regular waiter. You know I like my coffee as soon as I sit down. Yeah, I'm just... I've been sitting for at least 45 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Myrna, I'm just going through a lot of stuff right now. Yeah. Let's replay that scene. Imagine that scene is, our, is, is, is the game. And now let's sort of reskin that scene. Um, but let's see it. Uh, let's see that as a horror film, please. Yeah. <laughs> Mara, Mara, I'm sorry I'm so late. The entire kitchen staff was murdered this morning. <laughs> I am me. The lady, the lady Jessica is the most fair in all of Venice. She is crowned with all the diverse virtues. Her hair doth outluster the sun. Her very visage is as hewn by God's own lathe. Her temperament as cool and calm as summer breeze. Her wisdom sharp as keen as edge. And yet her mastication. <laughs> with these, her 32 compatriots <laughs> make gnashes of their meals. What rutting in her mouth is there that it doth discount and or cloud all other virtues that in her are held in balance? My dear Carl, I fear I must stop you there. For if thou lovest this lady, which thou claimst to do, and call her fair, as thusly thou hast done, why could you let such small a thing as this get in the way of you and your fair son? You said once you were moon. And she was Helios. Right. And now you let this smallest thing drive wedge between you both. This is the way of love, good Bernardo, that I, even though thou dost see the full picture, I, in double, treble glory, tis but one atomy of disfavor can becloud the whole scene. This is the mystery and monstrosity of love. I, I must break with her, but cannot for this separate myself from such a one. I beg thee, in my stead, go unto her and Tell the lady that I can see her no longer. <laughs> So that was a fun little improv show. I had to leave five, ten minutes early to get from the JW back to the event hall. But uh, there were people from Glass Cannon, Dropout TV, Stream of Blood. They were all there. Um, doing an improv comedy thing for about an hour. It was a lot of fun. Ross Bryant is so funny and very smart. Now heading to play a game of Defenders, Defenders of the Dictionary by, I think it's like Adam's Apple Games or something like that. 
and I have five minutes to get there. Should be plenty of time, and it'll be fun. Take you guys with me. How many around. years have you gone? I don't know, maybe close to 10. <laughs> yeah, point? that's why yeah. I, I hit 10 like a while ago, but I missed which year it was, so I'm not like, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What was the most fun you think you've done, or mm -hmm. is the most thing you are looking forward to? I ran my first game this year. <laughs> no way, I've never yeah. done that. I, it was kind of nice because it was fun to nice, get a little badge pass. Yeah. Get, what did you run? Divination. Ooh. It is a tarot-based role-playing game. Yeah, yeah. It's super fun. And played it first time last year. We played it Thursday night together. Yeah, we played it Thursday and then night. And ran two fun. games. Yeah. Heck yeah. And, and what about, kind of what's your favorite thing that happened? Um, I play a lot of Magic the Gathering. So <laughs> nice. I went to a Magic the Gathering live show last night. And that was a lot of fun. And got to meet the cast today. And that was, that was great. Yeah. And That's cool. Just walk around with my husband and like we buy a lot of art in the art show and stuff like that. Yes. Like, oh, yeah. did what's the favorite thing you bought in the hall? Uh for me it's probably some of the art that I bought. Yeah. I'm trying to think of what I actually found because uh, I only had Thursday to shop so far. Oh. Mm -hmm. um, but that's so many days ago. I know. <laughs> <laughs> we, we keep messing up the days. I bought I bought these earrings actually. Oh can I zoom out? Look at these. Where did you buy? Do you remember? It's in like the first, like 100. Uh -huh. They have the giant, but they have the big flappy fans. Okay. Oh, there. yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. thank you for. Oh, I want to see. Yeah. Okay. We talked about knitting. Yeah. I've been knitting my shawl. Oh, you're both a crocheter and a knitter. Yes, I am. Ambidextrous. Yes. <laughs> This is so beautiful. Wait, tell me about this yarn again. Um, so the she's actually UK based dyer, but it's all D and D themed. Is what it. she dyes, so it's based off the wish spell. Oh, do you know who she is? Do you know? Um, it, she's the corner of craft, um, and her yarns are chromatic yarns. Okay. Okay. Um, well, thank you. Yeah, her Hannah. She's an amazing. She actually has a YouTube channel. Yeah. Well, so. There you go. <laughs> 
fan. This is the Thursday Night Socks based off Critical Role. <laughs> oh my god, that's so good. Nice pattern, too. You get a lot of D&D inspired. Yeah, like... It's nice. Well. Yes, I love it. Well, next year we're gonna do some project. Yes. And we're all gonna do something and yeah. then do a make and, make and show off yes. thing. Yeah. Well, thank you so much you. for saying hi and I'll see you guys soon. Okay, bye. bye. every single year to share these stories and to like play these Her talents. It's Abrea Ayn. <laughs> Who was the first? Uh, that's right. Anjali Bamani! as my tongue. And I promise you, there is one thing that is sure in battle. If there is a large and terrifying beast in front of me, I will run behind something as big as him. <laughs> <laughs> and I've just come out of hell. I'm looking for fun, uh, a, a frosty pint, and maybe a random encounter in a tavern where I can do most of those things at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Not that voice. Get in character, everyone. <laughs> method, method, okay. <laughs> he playing. None other <laughs> than Durbin Cragstone. I am a dwarf and cleric of the life domain of the blessed Lord of Suffering, Ilmeter. The god of being kicked and punched and beaten. <laughs> he who on all of our behalf is tossed down many flights of stairs. <laughs> Spiritually, you understand. <laughs> you guys ready to play some D&D? &D? Yeah! So, <laughs> the criminal underworld is a very common turn of phrase. I'm gonna look over and I'm gonna go I'm gonna go over as a priest and, yeah. and gently lovingly tap his cheek and say, hey. Ogby, go home. <laughs> 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 you shot a stranger and then gave up. <laughs> I took a wild shot with a lethal weapon and then just kinda sat down. <laughs> it's time to go home. I mean I didn't want to hit her. I was just trying to scare her. I, I was scary. Look me in the eyes. <sighs> Don't make me cast stone of truth. Melissa, <laughs> 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 <I'm laughs> I said hello. Will deep dormant? Oh god. Are you feeling oh, no. lesser restoration? <laughs> <laughs> And he leaves and gives you a big kiss on the mouth. I give, I give, I give, I give, I give a big, big 
kisses of the Lord Ilmeter are always wet. <laughs> <laughs> and this little man pushes up, leaves just a full display of weaponry that was in like process of being poisoned on the table, gets up and leaves. You would know that like He's in, just an incredible drunk, but everyone kind of loves his stories and when he eventually breaks into song. So they Okay. Hi. Hey. What's your name? Cassie. Cassie? You're cool to meet you. How many years have you been going to sing? Uh, this is my first time going to all four days. And how are you liking this event? This is so cool. Uh, this is the best event. The yeah. lineup is incredible. I yeah. wasn't expecting food and we got some drinks. Yes. And this, uh, we got like a free dye. Oh yeah, that was the yeah. best part. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, it oh, was dice so cool. oh, yeah. <laughs> sure. Thank yeah. you so much for saying hi. Yes, thank you for and your videos. I hope I see you again. Yeah, yeah you too. The D&D live event tonight, and it's incredible. They've got food, they've got drink tickets, they've got dice, they've got egg cookies and milk, they've got Brenda Lee Mulligan and Abria and Samantha from Overwatch and people from Boulder City 3 playing d, d It's so good. And are we gonna die? character in this game. Hello. <laughs> My name is Seance Nose. <laughs> well, I am Jolene Balboa. Folks call me Joe. I am an assassin fighter from the Temple of the Dam. Uh, Lola Palooza, everyone. <laughs> yes, I would. Thank you. Daddy. <laughs> Hi everyone, I am playing Prima Donna, but my friends call me Donna, and I'm just like taking a break from boys so I can focus on myself, okay? Yeah. <laughs> very silly, very gay, very queer, very fucking on point. It was so good. Uh, I definitely didn't cry a whole lot today. Um, <laughs> because maybe in my, in my heart today is still Thursday and there's still plenty of Gen Con to go. And yeah, excited to get back to the room and start editing. How are you doing? Great. What day is it? Could you Thursday. Tell me. Anyway, I gotta go to bed. <laughs>